Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be taking that fire particle effects that we did. We're going to be moving it a little bit further. Um, I added a sensor so when the ball passes through the fire it lights the ball on fire and we also added a switch that you can hit and it turns the fire effects off. Um, so let's jump in and take a look at some of the things I did. And what I wanted to say off the bat is as I've done these videos, I've come to realize that there's there's a way to do it that's not so easy, and then there's a way to do it that's a lot easier. And I've been doing it the not so easy way, um, and I've slowly started to progress and make things a little bit easier. In the beginning, I was doing all the code by hand, and we were doing it as I was, or we were doing the video as I was typing the code in. Now I've kind of cut and paste. Now I'm just gonna. I don't think you guys understand how much work it is to go in, program everything, and then to revert it all back so that there's nothing in there and then do it all over again. So now what I do is I just do it and I think we're all familiar enough with the code and know how everything interacts that we don't need to see step by step. What I'll do is just show you all the code that I've created and we'll just run through it line by line and the things that I've added. So. Last night made me really realize that as I tried to recreate these particle effects that I had done before, and it's just very difficult. Um, so with that, let's jump in and let's just see uh, what I've done. Now I'm gonna. Uh, I had moved. Uh, so here's my fire. I had moved it all the way to the back of the the level here because of something I was doing. So let's move it back up to the front just so we can see what happens to the ball as it passes through the fire. Now you notice that it now has a pink box around it, and that's a sensor. So that any time the ball enters into this field here, it's going to light the ball on fire. Um, and so let's just start the game up. Yes, we'll save it. Let's turn this into textured mode. <clears throat> I did some tweaking on the on the fire and the smoke, and I'll show you that in a second here. Um, just made a few changes, but as you see, I'll launch the ball, and as it passes through the fire, the ball starts on fire and leaves a nice little trail of flame behind it. Um, now, in the end game, or, well, I shouldn't say the end game, when the game gets near to completion, I'm hoping that we'll be able to not only change the material so it looks more like it's burn up, and then also at some point we want the ball to explode or fall apart or something. The idea is once you go through the fire, um, you're not going to be able to get to the end of the level because the, the ball is going to get destroyed. So, And then I created this switch. You'll see the little pink box on the wall. And uh, this is where I moved the fire when I was doing some testing. So let me move the fire actually right now. Uh, edit scene. Come on, switch over to that view. And let's move this guy so it's a little bit easier to see what we've got going on here. Let's move that back. Because what happens is once we hit the switch, the flames start to die out, but they don't die out right away, which is the way I wanted it. Um, I wanted it to kind of taper out rather than just disappear. So let's get back to the... mode so if we hit the box over here I haven't turned the sensor off and actually that wasn't I guess that wasn't long enough or I didn't hit the box right let's go back and look to see if the fire's gone out yet nope so I didn't hit the box so let's try again oh you can see the trail is just above where the box was so that should have done it so you can see the fire tapers out and uh, what I forgot to do in the code was when we hit the switch to also turn off to make that sensor disappear. So hold on one second, let me adjust that. Okay, so I made a, a short uh, adjustment. And so now what we get is um, when we hit the switch, it shuts off the fire and the sensor. And then uh, when the ball goes back to the beginning and the level resets, the fire comes back and uh, the sensor is re-enabled. So, that's that. Let's jump into the code and take a look at uh, what we did. So the first thing it did, um, well first of all let's jump over to, sorry let's not go to the code yet. 
let's go to the particle. So first, um, I made some adjustments on the on the fire, um, just from the last time. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through these so you can see the numbers if you're following the numbers. But you know, I changed uh, one thing. I changed is I set this to a sphere object. I also turned off the use object transform. I didn't want that to be tied to the object at all. And then uh, you know, I messed with some of these, um, some of these settings here, and then also. Uh, the colors. I adjusted some of the colors a little bit and the big thing that I adjusted was down here at the global scale I moved it up to make the fire a little bit bigger um, and on the smoke I did the same thing. I adjusted a few of the colors. I made the smoke a little bit brighter um, adjust the size on it um, changed the transparency or the opacity to zero on the last frames because otherwise the smoke particles were popping out of existence and it looked a little disruptive so change that up a little bit but on the ball flame um, what I did on here is I said I don't want to use the object transform and what happens on that is as the ball is moving instead of the particles staying with the ball they'll trail behind it so I wanted it to follow along behind and I said you know use some collisions with terrain and other colliders and things I don't I didn't notice if that made uh, a big difference um, the emitter I went with a sphere again and I did the radius at 0.5 which is the radius of the ball so it would kind of match we did 512 on the particles. I wanted kind of a burst initially, so I did 25% uh, initial particles and then kind of almost uh, about 25% per second. And then used the same um, fire texture that we had done from before, put the additive blending on, set the lifetime of the particles fairly low so that they would, um, they would die off quickly as they trail behind the ball. And then just kind of tweak some of the other settings, um, you know, just to get the look that I, that I wanted. Um, you can kind of review some of these settings, go back and, and look at the video. There's just too many settings to actually go through uh, each individual one and talk about uh, you know why it's there. Um, the other thing that I did is I created a new model called the, the gas switch. It's just a square, one by one by one, and then uh, I put a sensor on that. Um, let's move this over a little bit. So there is a sensor. Um, actually, let's come over here and look at it. Here we go. So the sensor, it's the same size as the box. Um, I didn't make it a collidable object because I just didn't really care. Um, so the ball will pass right through it. And then the other thing that I had to do was go and make some AI. So let's look at the scripts that I created. Um, the first thing is um, the fire AI. And all that does so it's attached. I created a, uh, maybe it is better if I do this in order because <laughs> I keep going, keep forgetting what, what else I had to do. So I created a helper object um, that the fire was associated to. And then on that, on that fire helper, I also created the sensor that you saw in the scenes. When we come back here, yes, you'll see this this uh, sensor is attached to the actual fire helper and so I had to create some AI to handle that so let's go back over and look at what the the AI does so on the fire sensor all it does it says on sensor collision um, the first thing it does is it checks to see if the collision was uh, from the ball helper so that's that little virtual object that travels with the ball and it handles all the special effects and uh, I wanted it to be tied to that so that the flame wasn't spinning around with the ball. It would just kind of stay static, kind of like we did on the poly trail. So it checks to see if the ball helper went into the, the fire object. And if it did, it just starts the par particle emitter, which is just the, the flame. So that's pretty simple. Um, not a whole lot of code there. And then on the gas switch, um, I created this, uh, I created one variable and all it does is it gets a handle to the actual fire object and we do that on the on init method and uh, it just gets that fire helper object so we can uh, access it on the on sensor collision so whenever there's a collision with the switch it just says uh, pause pause all particle emitters so that just pauses the particle emitters on the fire and then the sensor that's attached to the fire um, 
this false means that it's it's no longer active so we deactivate the sensor that's on the fire so that handles that portion of it so so far we have the fire AI which lights the ball on fire and then we have the gas switch AI which turns the fire off and disables the sensor now for oops didn't mean to hit F1 now for actually turning the sensor back on we went back to our handy aim, aim cam AI the on ender frame and uh, I made a few changes in here uh, basically on the ball before I had this tag uh, this whole thing tucked into this function right here but then um, I also wanted to um, to turn off the fire so I just I put this out as a local variable and so now this little block resets the special effects in the ball so it turns off the trails it turns off the fire so that it can reset to the beginning and it doesn't have this trail of fire particles going after it. And then we also reset the fire. So we get a handle to the fire helper. Then here we start all the particle emitters back up and then we reactivate the sensor. So the next time the ball passes through it, it's gonna light on fire again. And so that's basically it. Um, it's real simple. There wasn't anything really difficult to do. And yet, you know, when you uh, play the scene uh, you know, we have this fire here, and when you pass through the fire, the ball is going to light on fire. Um, you can't see it as well in the upper in the upper view. Um, eventually, like I said, we'll have it explode, and then we also have it set up so that if we go through this switch, it's going to turn that thing off. So I was thinking maybe, you know, what we'll do is maybe in some of the levels we'll have a big wall of fire right over the exit. So at some point during the while you're bouncing the ball around you have to hit the switch to turn off the fire in order to get into the you know the target or whatever but we'll see anyway so um I apologize that i was a little scatterbrained um i'm going to have this planned out a little bit better now that i kind of have a feel for how this works with already having the code in the game so i'm going to write this down on paper and have it a little bit better structured i think it went a little more smoothly for me though not having to type everything out and recreate everything it was just there ready to go we just had to do explanations so Hopefully um, this format will work out well for you guys. Hopefully you're, ex you're excited about some of the changes that we're making and the cool effects that we've gotten to the game. And um, you know, we just keep moving forward and keep adding things until we get a, a full and complete game. Um, just an, uh, another plug for my website, go to subspacegames.com. Um, you can follow the link to play this prototype online in a web browser and go to GitHub and look at the actual script code um, and keep it up to date there. Um, or just check out my blog postings. So uh, we'll see.